Are you struggling to find something to do now that we're going through the writers and actors strikes? Too Opinionated has you covered 625 and counting episodes of the best actors, musicians, writers, and everybody involved in the entertainment universe. Go to MeisterCon Pod on YouTube and subscribe, and you'll never miss an episode. Thank you guys for your support. Until next time, bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. Really excited today. I've got filmmaker, writer, Francis Ann Solomon with me. So welcome, Francis. Hi. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm so excited to uh, to speak with you. I, I love some of the work that uh, that you've done, and you've been doing this for a little while. I have, yes. <laughs> I know. It doesn't seem like, because uh, we're of similar ages, and it doesn't seem like it's been that long. But like the 90s were 30 years ago. No, we don't have to continually talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, know, I'm a I'm a I'm a grandparent now. So I'm reminded daily yeah. of my age. <laughs> but I'm it's not. not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. No, no, of course not. I think especially now age is a number you know it's That's just right. a number we're living longer having you know healthier lives and yep. i certainly don't feel like i'm slowing down anytime soon you know i i would like to say that but i feel like i've slowed down a little bit but i'm actively fighting against it so we're gonna go as long as we can. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you should just do whatever you want to do. You know, that's right. the that's the benefit of being our age. I think is that you actually get to choose to do exactly what that's you want. Right. To do. Yeah, that's the nice thing about kind of becoming an adult. Yeah, you get to choose where you want to put your energy. Exactly. Exactly. That's pretty nice. So, so Francis, let's start this way. You know, tell me because I think you've got kind of a, a really interesting backstory. Tell me a little bit about what got you into the entertainment business. You know, why'd you want to go into that? Uh, well, it was a long time ago, but um, I grew up in Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean. And um, I think I was always a creative person. Um, so when I left school, my, the first job that I had was in um, a video production company and uh, and I found my calling, I think. Before that, I'd studied theater, actually, and um, loved that. Um, but when I began to edit films, edit videos, I was like, wow, this is what I want to do. This is, you know, be in a dark room and just make dreams <laughs> out of images. Um, I just loved it. I could stay there all the time. So that's that's what I ended up kind of just pouring my myself into. Yeah. Yeah. I'm assuming that over the course of your career, it has changed how what you're doing in that in that dark room just because the technology has advanced to the you point. Know, it, hasn't to, changed. it hasn't really changed. hasn't. OK, um, it hasn't changed um, in terms of what what we do yet. Um, what has changed, as you say, is the technology when I started um, when I started, went to film school, we were cutting film with a razor blade right. and sticking it back together. <laughs> and we we were using cameras that were massive like this, and and that you and that you, you you know that had actual film in them, which sounds archaic now. Yeah. Um. So you've seen that move from that to video to to now digital media, and um, but. The process of storytelling is identical. At the end of the day, you have a you want to tell a story, and it it hasn't that process. I don't think has changed since the beginning of filmmaking, and I would even say it hasn't changed since you know people um, sat at the knees of their grandparents and got told stories about what it was like um, back in the day. That you know we as a people love to hear stories. Um, and we and we'll we'll do it in any way we can. And that process, you know, what is a story? What is the process of uh, what is an audience? You know, those things haven't changed. Yeah, at all. Yeah. That completely makes uh, makes sense. When you were when you were doing theater, did you have 
you know, a uh, ambition to to be an actress, or did you already know that you'd probably be working, you know, behind the scenes or behind the camera? Well, I um, I, 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 I found my calling when I applied to do the um director's program. Yeah. So and we had to direct a number of of plays, um, as part of that. And um, the first day that I walked into an empty theater um, as the director, I knew that that was what I wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. There's nothing better than finding what you're actually meant to do. That's the best. Yeah, not uh, not too not too bad. So so you've got your own kind of a uh, uh, company. Um Caribbean Tales, right? Is the is the name of the the company. So what's the, you know, are is the is is that what you're focusing on is kind of telling those um stories, you know, around the Caribbean or is it um that's the company name because that's your background but you produce and direct, you know, all kinds of different things. Uh, my I started my career at the BBC in England. Yeah, um, where I worked, where I was trained, and then worked my way up to being a, a drama producer at the BBC. Um, and then I I felt that as a woman, uh, as a woman of color, a black woman, I wanted what was missing from the work that I was doing was our stories. You know, stories from my point of view. Yeah, stories from the point of view of people who came from the, where I came from. I didn't see the world that I grew up in reflected in the kinds of things that were being commissioned. And I really wanted to commit myself to that work. Um, so that's when I started uh, my own company. And um, and I called it Caribbean Tales initially, um, almost haphazardly because I wanted it to tell all kinds of stories in its diaspora. Um, but um, it's not the most imaginative name in the world, but it was useful at that time and it stuck. Yeah. Well, yeah, that happens a lot. You know, once you kind of choose that name, it takes on a life of its own. That's probably going to be the name, you know, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and that was 22 years ago. So, yeah, that's pretty great. That's pretty great. So I know, I know you'd moved to, to Canada. Was it a big deal getting the new movie? back onto the BBC? Uh, um, well, Hero, we I made Hero over 10 years as a as an independent film. Oh, wow. That, yeah, so it took a while. It took a while. It absolutely did. That's what happens when you work outside the system as an independent and you have to raise every penny on your own through your own company and so on. And it was a complicated story to tell because we shot it in Trinidad. It was about a, a man called Ulrich Cross so we filmed his childhood in Trinidad. He served in the Second World War in England, so we filmed in England. And then he was um, invited to come to Ghana in Africa um, to serve there. And he actually worked in Ghana, Tanzania, and Congo. And so we went to Ghana and shot there also. And then all the post-production I did in Canada. So all of that took a, a lot of organization and work and time and all that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, we, um, we, we, we launched it in 2019 um, in England at the BFI. And then um, this year, then COVID kind of, we had a lot of success showing it in, in different festivals and so on. And it was bought by Showtime in the US. Um, but um, th then COVID kind of took over and blew up, blew cinema, cinema screenings out of the water. Um, so it was great uh, now this year to, that the film has been bought um, and will be seen on the BBC as well as on their online platform, BBC iPlayer. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I think that's terrific. Is, is the film based on a real person? It is. And he was a friend of my family. And oh. um, so in the early stages of making the film, I actually interviewed him and there are clips of him in the movie. Oh, I love that. Interwoven with the, the dramatizations about his life. Um, even though it is a drama, um, there, there are, you know, there's a draw, there's, it's a drama that shows 
him as a young man, as a child growing up in, 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 in the, in the twenties, in the 1920s in Trinidad, it shows him as a soldier um, and as a lawyer in England in the, in, in the thirties and forties, yeah. it shows him as a, as a jurist in Africa in, in the fifties, sixties and seventies. Um, but I think it really adds something very special to it that we have. I think there are three places in the film where there's an actual uh, clip of the man himself at 96 talking to the camera. And I, I think, you know, for me, that, that has a huge impact sure. because, because you get to see who the person was, you know, as a child and in the prime of his life. And then you see someone who literally is, um, you know, on his deathbed. Um, he's yeah. lying in bed and chatting, chatting to me, basically laughing at his own life. <laughs> <laughs> I love that because when you go see a movie and then it, that's based on true story, but then at the end, sometimes they'll they'll show you the real person. I always love that. So yeah. you get that kind of yeah. first throughout the movie. Yeah, it's such a it's such an incredible story. This man who came from Trinidad, who grew up in a tiny island, who served in England in the Second World War and was the most decorated West Indian um, serviceman, and then who traveled all over Africa and, yeah. and was involved in the in the liberation movements across Africa um, at a, like this critical point in time. It's just a, it's such an incredible story. I just wanted to constantly remind people that this was true, you know, that this guy right. is right here. He's lying in his bed. He's 96 and he's laughing at me, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I love that, uh, that part of it. And I love uh, the fact that you always seem to be putting stuff out, you know, movies or whatever it is, but projects out that represent people that maybe are a little underrepresented. Yeah. I think that's sure. kind of a, a neat angle to, to go with because, you know, as an audience or as fans, that's what we want. We just want good stories. It doesn't matter who's in them. We just want good stories. And, and I think you do a great job telling those. Oh, thank you. I, I appreciate that. It's because growing up, I didn't see um, people like, you know, my uncle Ulrich or my parents, my, yeah. you know, I, I grew up, I feel like I grew up, you know, I'm sure we all feel that surrounded by incredible people when amazing things were happening. But then you turn on the TV or you go to the movie and it's like, hello, right. who are these people? What is this world? <laughs> you know, which is fine. But uh, there's a special kind of satisfaction that comes from seeing yourself, you yeah. know, your own life, being able to identify deeply with the story and so I've, I've got lots of wonderful feedback and I think you know it's wonderful hearing somebody like you saying that it's 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 you want to hear stories about different kinds of yeah. people because it really takes you out of yourself and takes you on a journey into another world right. you know we all like people have such different lives you know such the cultures are so different yeah yeah and and that's the part that that I love about your work you know we had similar issues i think in hollywood you know where we weren't really diverse and there was a lot of voices that weren't being heard and that's improved somewhat you know the last few years especially you're seeing a lot uh, uh, more diverse work but we still got a ways to go i didn't realize that that same type of thing was happening in other countries like britain especially you know, I probably should have known that, but I didn't realize that, you know, they weren't as diverse as they should have been either. Invented slavery, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Europeans actually invented that. So um, it's not a surprise that that it's the most deep rooted, if you like, that it took a lot. To, it's taking a lot to, uh, to unearth that horrible disease. Right. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Did you, when, when you were, you know, I know you lived there for a long time. Did, did you encounter um, professionally, you know, issues with trying to get these stories made at that time? Did, did, did you run into resistance? 
for sure yeah absolutely i mean it's um it it's like there's an absence of certain kinds of stories there's a lack of interest in certain yeah. kinds of stories like even this story about ulrich which i wanted to tell because my mother is a friend of his was a friend of his or was a friend of who ulrich was he's passed on now um and she really she really wanted me to make a film as the filmmaker in the family about his incredible life and the more i talk to him the more well, this is incredible this man has been all over the world doing incredible things you know it's really <laughs> amazing um but trying to sell that story to um you know it's like why would we be interested in that that's not right. interesting it's really it's it's actually, i think it is interesting i i just it, it amazes me um how short-sighted you know some of the bigger companies uh have been in the past with that because a good story is a good story it doesn't really matter who's in it exactly yeah so it, it it has been it has been very difficult but as you say a lot has changed in the last um in the last couple of years since the yeah. murder of george floyd essentially there's been a huge change in uh, you know in representation in the media right. And opportunities to tell different kinds of stories. And the Me Too movement has also changed things for women, sure. um, women creators. So I think it's a good time. And that is really why I'm not prepared to throw in the towel just yet, you know, <laughs> because I feel like I've been waiting my entire career to be have this moment to be able to, and I have so many stories to tell. I'm really excited. Yeah, it's an exciting time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good time. As you say, a lot still to be done, yeah. but there is that possibility and i'm so excited it uh ulrich cross sounds like an action hero to me yeah that's why we called it hero <laughs> <laughs> well that's what yeah it's what that's the uh what kind of invokes you know in my head is that he's obviously kind of a, a an action hero type of guy that's amazing but even even um, he had a reputation for being very debonair and, you know, quite the womanizer. And also um, a very famous British writer met him when he was, um, you know, uh, uh, serving in the, in, in the army, in the, yeah. in the British army, and wrote a book called The, the, the Black Hornet about this, um, you know, incredible soldier who was black and, you know, did all these incredible things about him. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Had is is your is your mother still around? Was she able to see the film? Yes, th thankfully she is. Elric died um in 2013 and we yeah. finished the film five years later. Um so that was unfortunate because um I feel like it would have been really nice if he had been able to see it. Yeah. But um but my mom is still here and you know I'm really glad that what I was she able think to... of the film well she's she's you know she's delighted she's really really pleased and happy um because she she's the person who who wanted to make the film she she raised some of the money herself and you know she took on the role of a producer on behalf of a friend you know and uh, she wanted to get it made so it's like it's like just honoring the legacy of my mother and my extended family, you know, and saying your your lives have been not been forgotten. Your lives have been the lives on which we have built our wonderful lives, you know. So um, it's it's a beautiful it's a beautiful way. It's it's what I was saying before that the tradition of storytelling is about began with elders telling children stories about their lives so that they could know who they were and so that they could, um, you know, take the wisdom of the past forward into their own lives and build more. And so it's really important that we be able to do that. And as you see, the, the way that the media um, has excluded certain kinds of voices has prevented that natural those natural traditions from happening. And, right. and so, you know, I feel it's really important for us to pass on those stories and to honor those who went before. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Did you get to do like a red carpet event for the movie? Yeah. Yeah. We had one, we had a number of red carpet events. 
um, one in Toronto, one in um, the, the UK, which was wonderful because Ulrich spent a lot of time in England. Yeah. Um, so at the British Film Institute. And we also had one in the US in Los Angeles at the Pan African Film Festival. Oh, nice. That festival in 2020. Yeah, it was wonderful. You had done a film that I, I thought was um, interesting because it, it de- I can't remember the name. You all have to help me with that. But it, it depicted uh, like um, Chinese immigrants in Britain at a laundromat. And I'd never seen that before. You know, we we have a lot of films and TV shows that kind of um, deal with uh, the Chinese immigrants here in the States, but I'd never seen that in the UK. What was the name of that film? Yeah, um, that, was, that film was called Peggy Sue. Peggy Sue, Peggy that's right. Sue. That's right. Yeah, with an exclamation mark. And it was great because, yes, um, just, you know, the, the kind of patterns of immigration from what were formerly the colonies right. to um, the West, Europe and America are very similar. So, you know, you take a film like Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, that right. brand new film that came out by the Daniels, which features an Asian family um, who run a laundromat, right? right? <laughs> yeah, because this was one of the traditional things that um, those immigrants um, did in order when they first came to the West, right? They yeah. ran laundromats, they had restaurants, you know, those kinds of things. And again, honoring those, like just recognizing those patterns of immigration and honoring the, that movement of people um, is, I feel, so important to say, you know, that restaurant around the corner, that laundromat where, you know, you just take your dirty clothes basically right. and leave them there and then collect. That's a whole family. That's all people coming um, here to make better lives. Those are heroes yes. who are building a future for their children. You know, it's really important to tell those stories. Yeah, I, I completely agree. What, where did that idea come from did you know a family that ran a laundromat or was you know where did that idea come from i was um, working as a producer at the bbc and one of the writers that i was working with was chinese himself yeah kevin wong and it was his family story right so oh, he okay. wrote it about his own family um what was beautiful was that when we um so he wrote it about you know it was a comedy but it was inspired by his own family's story and um, about class and struggle, but it was a comedy. And then, and then when we went to shoot it, we traveled up to Liverpool, which is where he was from in the North of England. And we actually found an old 19, 1960s laundry, Chinese laundry. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Where a young, where, where there was a guy living there and we were able to use that laundry and shoot inside of it. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah, I love that that you concentrate on those type of stories, which is what I was mentioning early earlier. I think it's it's really commendable that you're you're making stories that might not have gotten made otherwise. Thank you. I really appreciate that. That's very, very Yeah, of fun. course. Of course. Well, Francis, I know we got to we got to wrap up, but is there is there anything else that you're working on? that we can kind of keep an eye out for outside of Hero? Well, right now, um, we've got two projects on the go. Um, one is called In the Black, which is about a man called Denim Jolly, who, who's, who spent 12 years uh, trying to get the first Black radio station off the ground in Canada. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we're just about to start that and then I'm also making a, a TV series a comedy about his youth when he first came to Canada in the 50s and he was living in this rooming house owned by this um this incredible woman called Violet Williams who was a liberation leader and a social um you know organizer and yeah. she got people jobs and you know she was like the social services and a renaissance woman all in one um so <laughs> well, yeah, that actually, like in my head, I can see some some places where comedy could come into that. Yes, yeah, because of all these people staying in the rooming house, right. all the different 
and things that would go on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's exciting. How uh, how far along are you? Is that something that we'll see this year, next year? Well, we've shot the the um the TV series, so we're we're oh. editing it now. So that'll definitely come out later this year. And then in the black is shooting. Um, we're going to be start shooting next month, and then we'll be shooting until January. So that should come out at the end of next year. That's that's exciting. That's exciting. Do you prefer to produce or direct? I prefer to direct. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I don't think I would be able to direct if I wasn't a producer. Yeah, that I makes think, sense to me. Yeah. I, I think that that has, I, I, I think what I like to do is direct the shows that I, my shows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it gives you, I mean, you've got the vision. You know, you've brought it this far, so it makes sense that you would want to have your hands on the final product. That Yeah, but it's great to work with people. You know, I, I have wonderful people that I work with and um, it would be impossible. Film is an incredibly collaborative medium and yeah. it would be impossible to do it without amazing talent, you know, actors and writers and other producers. And, and especially now as I get you know, I won't say older, but I'm a bit more um, of an adult, as you say. Yeah. Um, you know, you you appreciate the support and companionship and um, collegial collaboration of wonderful people, you know? Yeah. Where did you find your actor to play uh, Ulrich? Oh, I, he was in Trinidad, um, which is where I come from. And he was a singer. I was look, you know, I wanted it to be somebody who was from Trinidad. I didn't want to fake that. Right. Um, so he needed to be from Trinidad. Um, he needed to be somebody who could kind of wet look between, you know, 24 and 60, basically, who could, we could work with that way, quite plastic, who was who and, and who could carry that kind of role on, yeah. on the show. What he was, what he was um. He was a rock star, actually. He was a singer. And I saw him on stage and I was like, wow, that guy has a lot of presence, you know. <laughs> he really knows how to, you know, grip pe- grip attention, hold attention of a big yeah. audience. So I said to him, would you like to audition? And um, he was like, yeah. <laughs> would you like to go to Africa and England for the next four months? <laughs> he was like, Yeah. <laughs> So Nikolai Salcedo, wonderful actor. Yeah. And I think it, it was a, an incredible experience for all of us. Yeah. Traveling together and making the movie. Yeah, that's exciting. Well, Francis, thank you so much for taking a little bit thank of time. You. Yeah, I was so excited to to talk with you. Um, before we go though, are you are you on social media? And if you are, where can we find you? Yes. Um, the company is Caribbean Tales. Yeah. So Caribbean Tales.ca, Caribbean Tales on Twitter, Caribbean Tales and Instagram and Facebook, and also one word, Caribbean Tales, and also myself, Francis and Solomon.com. Yeah, exciting. Well, Francis, I hope you'll come back when you get the next one, when you get the comedy Thanks. made, come back and tell us about it. Oh, I'd love to. It's been lovely talking to you. Yeah, this has been just the best. Okay, hold on one second. Francis and Solomon, I hope you uh, enjoyed that. I love her work. I think she's doing really important work because it's bringing, you know, underrepresented stories to the big screen, the small screen, and and I love that. So do me a favor. Do Francis a favor, check out Hero, The Extraordinary Life of Mr. Ulrich Cross. It's on BBC Two, I believe, um, right now. And they're showing it uh, over and over because it's it's so good. So definitely uh, check that out. And if you can find, especially if you're like me and you like a lot of the British um, TV shows and movies, if you can find Peggy Sue, really good story about a Chinese laundromat in Britain. Really, uh, really interesting. So check that out as well. If you're finding us for the first time, we uh, thank you. We, we love that you're here. Would love to also have your support and it's easy. It's free. All we ask is that you subscribe. You know, if you want to watch, 
Our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Just hit subscribe. Easy. If you're listening or prefer to listen, wherever you listen to your podcast at, just subscribe there. That'll help us as well. We put out episode 617 today. Um, you can find all of those, audio and video, on our website, MeisterCon.com. So definitely check us out there as well. You know, we were recently named one of the top podcasts on IMDb, which is the entertainment um, database. So proud of that. Most of the um, podcasts ahead of us are from the bigger companies, Disney and Marvel or um, Joe Rogan, those type of podcasts. So we're just thrilled to death to be listed among those. Would really appreciate if you would go to IMDb, if you're able to, and look us up. Just the fact that pulling the page up, that's all you got to do is pull the page up, helps us. Uh, it's under the Two Opinionated Podcast. Thank you guys so, so much. Until next time. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm once again here to ask for your support. It's been a big year for the Two Opinionated Podcast. Back in February, we got to live out a dream, moderate for William Shatner, here in our hometown. In May, we passed 100,000 downloads on our YouTube channel, and we followed that up in June with 50,000 downloads on the audio side. We recently posted our 600th episode, which is pretty good volume for just a uh, father and son operation. You know, not too many podcasts can keep that volume up. We've been doing this now for four and a half years, 600 plus episodes. We recently hit 1,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, which is a really big deal for us because we've always gotten the views but have struggled to get people to subscribe. So that 1,000 was a big deal for us. And best of all, we were recently named one of the top podcasts on IMDb, which is the entertainment database. You know, those that are ahead of us, we came in at number 82. Those that are ahead of us are bigger companies like Disney, mostly Marvel, and Joe Rogan, that type of uh, podcast. So for us, being just a, a small West Virginia father and son podcast, to be in the top 100 out of 15 million, it's a pretty big deal for us. So thank you for everything you've done for us so far. Got a couple little ways, though, that you can help us, and they're free, and they're really easy. If you haven't checked out our YouTube channel yet, Please go to YouTube. It's under MeisterCon Pod. Just hit subscribe. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Really helps us a ton. And maybe even more important, if you could go to IMDB, IMDB.com, look up the Two Opinionated Podcast and just look around the page. Just having that traffic on the page really helps us out. So that's a couple of easy ways that you can support us, even. If you're not listening or watching all of the time, and we want you to listen and watch, because I think that our our guest list I would put up against anybody, any other show, podcast, anybody out there. I think our guest list holds up. So please check us out. You you probably will find somebody that you like, or maybe somebody that you didn't know you liked, but kind of discovered them. On there. There's tons of that. If you're into music, we have that too. If you like books, we've got authors on there. If you if you're more into what goes on behind the scenes in the entertainment world, you know, we've got producers, directors, um, video artists, anything you can think of that happens behind the scenes, we've had them on the show. So definitely check us out. Thank you guys so, so much. Until next time. Bye, everybody. <laughs>